Hello and welcome to my presentation. Today I'm going to be talking about the polymers that are used in fashion and clothing. What is a polymer? Well, polymer comes from the words poly and meros, which are derived from Greek, where poly means many and meros means part. And so a molecule that is called a polymer is a molecule which is made out of many parts. And these parts are called monomers. And these are the repeating subunits which make up a polymer. An example of a polymer is cellulose. Cellulose is an example of a polysaccharide and it's composed of a linear chain of beta-1,4 linked delta glucose units. And as you can see in the image, at the top you've got the repeating monomer subunit and then the 3D polymer structure. This is an example of a natural polymer. Types of polymers. There are two main types of polymers. There are natural polymers and there are synthetic polymers. Examples of natural polymers which are used in the clothing and fashion industry are cotton, wool and linen, and examples of synthetic polymers are nylon, lycra, kevlar, polyester and Gore-Tex. The main difference between them is that natural polymers generally are biodegradable and better for the environment, whereas synthetic polymers generally have a more negative uh, impact on the environment due to their inability to biodegrade. Lycra and spandex. Made from a long chain polymer called polyurethane, produced by reacting a polyester with a diisocyanate. The polymer is converted into a fibre most commonly by using a dry spinning technique, and 95% of lycra is produced using this technique. An example of lycra is spandex, which is made up of long chain polyglycol combined with short diisocyanate. It contains at least 85% polyurethane. It is an elastomer, which means it can be stretched to a certain degree and then recoils when released. Due to this property, fabrics can be created to have the desirable stretching and strength characteristics. And as you can see at the top, there is a diagram of the synthesis of the polymer polyurethane. And there is also a diagram of polyglycol. So how does an elastomer work? Fibres are made up of numerous polymer strands. Two types of segments, long amorphous segments and short rigid segments. The amorphous segments have a random molecular structure in their natural state. They intermingle, which makes the fibres soft. The rigid portions of the polymers bond with each other, giving the fibre structure. When force is applied to stretch the fibres, bonds between the rigid sections are broken and the amorphous segments straighten out, making them longer. Once maximum length is reached, rigid segments once again bond with each other, while the amorphous segments remain elongated. The fibre is stiff and strong. After the force is removed, amorphous segments recoil and the fibre returns to its relaxed state. And here we've got a diagram of the polymer, and it shows the rigid segment and the soft segment. Materials used to produce spandex fibres. A variety of raw materials are used to produce spandex fibres, including pre-polymers, stabilisers and colorants. Pre-polymers. There are two types of pre-polymers. There is the macroglycol, which can be a polyester, a polyether, a polycarbonate, polycaprolactone, or a combination. These are long-chain polymers with hydroxyl groups at both ends. The important feature of these polymers is that they are long and they are flexible. Polymeric diisocyanate. These are shorter chain polymers with isocyanate groups on both ends. Their important feature is their rigidity. When mixed together, they react to form spandex fibres. Hydroxyl groups on the macroglycols react with the isocyanates. Each molecule gets added to the end of another molecule and a long chain polymer is formed. This is known as a step growth or addition polymerization. Stabilizers. Spandex fibers are vulnerable to damage from heat, light, atmospheric contaminants, and chlorine. Stabilizers are added to protect the fibers. An example of this is antioxidants, which are added to fibers and they include monomeric and polymeric hindered phenols. Ultraviolet screeners such as hydroxybenzotriazoles can also be added to protect against light degradation. Compounds which inhibit fibre discoloration are also added. 
all stabilizers that are added to spandex fibers are designed to be resistant to solvent exposure as this could damage the fibers. Colorants. When first produced, spandex fibers are white. Therefore, colorants are added to improve their aesthetic appearance. Dispersed and acid dyes are typically used. When interwoven with other fibers, nylon or polyester, special drying methods are then required. Why is spandex so great? It can be stretched repeatedly and will return to its original shape. It's lightweight, soft and smooth. It's easily dyed. It's resilient as they are resistant to abrasion and deleterious effects of body oils, perspiration and detergents. They are compatible with other materials and can be spun with other fibres to produce unique fabrics. Lycra and spandex uses. Elastin fabrics are rarely marketed on their own and they're usually woven into other textiles, polyester, cotton, wool, due to, their in to improve their elasticity. Found in waistbands of sweatpants, loungewear or any other type of clothes, they are designed to be stretchy, such as socks. Sportswear. Elastin enables clothes to be tight-fitting without causing discomfort. Motion capture suits. This enables film producers to insert realistic-looking three-dimensional characters into their films. Environmental impact. Fabric is significantly detrimental to environmental health after sold to consumers because lycra doesn't biodegrade. 60% of waste present in the waterways is composed of non-biodegradable fabric fibres. Even if apparel containing this fabric is disposed of responsibly, whenever they wash lycra clothes, elastin fibres break off and with every wash, contaminating the water supply, and it may take thousands of years for all of the world's lycra to actually biodegrade. Kevlar. Kevlar's monomer is made up of an amide group and a phenyl group. Kevlar is the commercial name for poly p phenylene tetrathalamide. Kevlar is a polyamide, which is a type of synthetic polymer. The amide groups are separated by paraphenylene groups, meaning that the amide groups are attached to each other on opposite sides of the phenyl group, carbons 1 and 4. The large phenyl groups separating the amides cause the polymer of Kevlar to nearly always form the trans conformation, where the phenyl groups arrange themselves so that they are on opposite sides of the rigid amide bond. The strength of Kevlar. The strength of Kevlar comes from its unusually regular internal structure. This has implications for the hydrogen bonding which occurs between the electron dense oxygen atom and the electron deficient hydrogen. The all trans configuration giving long straight strands means that the hydrogen bonding can occur very regularly to form a very strong lattice, simil similar to those formed in crystals. This structure can be compared to the hydrogen bonding present in a protein in the alpha helix or beta sheet structure in the secondary structure due to the nature of the strong hydrogen bonding. The fibres consequently have very few flaws and so are very difficult to break up. Strong and lightweight. At its core, Kevlar is an extremely lightweight yet strong synthetic polymer that is weaved into a material that is five times stronger than steel when the weight is equal. Kevlar has an incredibly high tensile strength that is eight times stronger than steel wire. Uses. The most common use of Kevlar is for bulletproof vests and body armour. Why? The lightweight nature of Kevlar allows for police officers, bodyguards and military personnel to move quickly without worrying about the bulk of wearing heavy armour. Secondly, the borderline invulnerability of Kevlar means that the people who serve and protect us every day are also being thoroughly protected. Drawbacks Kevlar is very stiff. Consequently, wearers suffer a great loss of movement, which is a disadvantage when being used by police who often need to react quickly. Kevlar is also not waterproof, and it actually absorbs water, and therefore it's more susceptible to environmental influences. Kevlar can also not be placed in direct sunlight, as it causes the fibres to lose their density and makes Kevlar much less effective and therefore it's mostly used on the inner lining or core of products. And so there are still improvements that can be made to this material. Environmental impact. Kevlar is not biodegradable. 
This means that it's left to decompose in landfill and it will not decompose for a very long time. Kevlar is, however, 100% recyclable and there are various companies, for example, Ballistic Recycling, that specialise in the recycling of Kevlar. However, the manufacturing of Kevlar requires the use of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is very toxic to animals and plants and if disposed of or used incorrectly, it can do great harm. Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is a patented type of waterproof fabric made with a variant of polytetrafluoroethylene (PTFE), known as expanded PTFE. As one of the first flexible waterproof fabrics invented, Gore-Tex remains a highly popular waterproofing material with few significant competitors. Gore-Tex is included in a wide variety of different types of outdoor apparel, originally used exclusively in rain shells and winter jackets. Resistance to outdoor exposure. It's made from the polymer polytetrafluoroethylene, PTFE. PTFE is a perfluorocarbon resin. In perfluorocarbon resins, all of the carbon atoms in the backbone of the polymer chain are fully bonded to fluorine atoms. The carbon to fluorine bond, CF bond, is such a strong bond that neither oxygen nor ultraviolet light are sufficiently energetic enough to break it. PTFE can withstand temperatures from minus 240 to 240 degrees centigrade. No solvating agent is known for PTFE. Therefore, PTFE is chemically inert and so products containing it will age extremely slowly. Waterproof. The distribution of the fluorine atom around the carbon polymer backbone balances the electronegative and electropositive charges, making PTFE non-polar. Non-polar materials are not attractive to polar substances like water. This fully fluorinated polymer has a low surface energy, which causes it to be non-wettable by water. The environmental impact. Gore-Tex fabric has a notably negative impact on the environment. PTFE gas and powder emissions. The production of PTFE involves the emission of a variety of gases as well as the handling of PTFE in powder form. When inhaled, both PTFE gases and powders can be significantly harmful to human lung and nervous system health and can result in a condition known as poly polymer fume fever. PTFE in landfills. If this substance seeps into surrounding ecosystems, it can degrade into trifluoroacetate, TFA, a substance that interferes with plant growth. PTFE is non-biodegradable, and this is due to its inert properties. However, it does break down into toxins that pollute the environment for decades, and it is possible to recy recycle PTFE, but doing so costs more than making new PTFE material. DWR. It's necessary to spray Gore-Tex periodically with DWR to help it keep it breathable. The safety of DWR has not yet been established, and this substance is, known, is a known environmental toxin. The future of fashion and clothing. A more sustainable fashion industry with polyethylene. In a recent study in the US, there has been an increasing interest in using polyethylene to produce a new textile, which could be revolutionary in making the fashion industry more sustainable. The fabric was produced using polyethylene, the simplest and cheapest of all polymers, and its properties include superior cooling properties to cotton or linen, more stain resistant than polyester, and can behave like a multi-layer synthetic fabric using a single polymer, and this means that it's way more easily recyclable. And this means it can also be made with recycled materials as well. Improved sustainability. The use of PE could therefore significantly contribute to the ecological footprint which is heavily associated with the fashion industry. The textile industry has a huge carbon footprint with the 56 million tonnes of fabric it produces every year, responsible for 5-10% to of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. As the industry moves away from using natural polymers such as cotton, linen and wool, and towards the use of more synthetic polymers, it is necessary to produce more eco-friendly, recyclable alternatives. We have come to the end of the presentation, so to conclude, more research needs to be done to produce new and innovative materials, as well as research into greener alternatives for pre-existing materials. At the end of the day, polymer chemistry is the future of the fashion industry. Thank you for listening.